If you're on the fence about this show, perhaps these awesome facts will help nudge you in the right direction. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top five surprising facts about Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I'm very scared to ask you this. Yes, there was weird sex stuff in the bunker. Let me finish! Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at some lesser-known facts pertaining to the Netflix series Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Why are you dressed like a robot? Remember dream following? Yes, Kimmy, I do. But I can't exactly quit my job. I still got bills to pay. Number 5. The show was nearly scrapped. Four women rescued from an underground apocalypse cult allegedly run by self-proclaimed the messiah, Reverend Richard Wayne Gary Wayne. When Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt was first conceived, it had a much darker tone. NBC feared that it wouldn't connect with audiences, and demanded the show be rewritten in a more positive light. However, even after this was accomplished, the network still didn't think it would find an audience. A new pair of shoes and a black friend? Are you kidding me? On the verge of scrapping the show entirely, a hero emerged. Netflix had a feeling that Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt was a winner, so they swooped in and purchased it. As a testament to their beliefs, Netflix initially signed the show for a two-season deal. Talk about being saved by the bell. Uh, sister company, Universal. Yeah, there's so much corporate synergy going Isn't on. There. <laughs> Number four, Burgess has his own brand of Pinot Noir. It's called Pinot Noir. Classy. An ode to black penis. Fans of the show will immediately recognize the name of Burgess's wine as a reference to the now famous song his character sings during an episode of season one. The catchy tune is, in Titus's words, an ode to black penis and it quickly became a viral hit. Pinot Noir, smoke a cigar. Revenge can be spectacular. Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Burgess was quick to jump on the show's wave of popularity, and in 2016 debuted his personal brand of wine, aptly named Pinot by Titus. A bottle will run you about $25, and it's loaded with an array of exciting flavors, including black cherry cola. Yum! <laughs> Number three, the roles were written for the actors, but one still had to audition. What am I doing? <laughs> you tell me! This isn't the Chinatown bus! You can't just choke someone who's sleeping! As is often the case in film and TV, characters are written with specific actors in mind. Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt was no different. The roles of Kimmy, Titus and Jacqueline were all written for Ellie Kemper, Titus Burgess, and Jane Krakowski respectively. However, only one of them was still required to audition for the part. I'm fine. I don't need to talk about it. Kimmy, you yell in your sleep, you bite my nails, and we still don't know why you're afraid of Velcro. That's right. Even though Titus Andromedon was named about Titus Burgess, the actor still had to prove that he was the right person for the role. Thankfully for him, and fans everywhere, he totally nailed it. Wait a minute. That's the same day. Is it? I wouldn't know. Number two, Pinot Noir was a last second edition. Pinot Noir! By now, everybody and their grandmother have heard of Pinot Noir. But did you know that it was scrapped together on the spot? During a particularly strenuous day on set, Tina Fey's husband and Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt composer Jeff Richmond played a beat from a different song and instructed the show's writers to supply Titus Burgess with rhymes. After the scene was shot, Richmond added additional elements to the song to give it a more complete feeling. Regardless of how it was created, it's hard to argue against the song's universal appeal. Track, so they were like, whatever comes out, they were just literally throwing out words, and I just started Rose singing. Roseanne Barr. Roseanne, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Number one, it was originally called Tooken. Life beats you up, Titus. It doesn't matter if you get Tooken by a cult or you've been rejected over and over again at auditions. The original title of the show was a darkly humorous way of drawing reference to the fact that Kimmy Schmidt was abducted as a child. However, it didn't fly with studio executives and was quickly changed to Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yet the title wasn't the only thing that changed because of this. If the show had been called Tooken, the theme song would have been completely different. Unbreakable, they alive, damn it. It's a miracle. It would have provided context to Kimmy's situation through the use of additional lyrics. The title change was also seen as a way for the show's creators to focus on Kimmy's future instead of her dark past. I'm not going back. What? I'm staying here. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.